Hi guys, it's Jan. Welcome back to my channel. So today I figured I would do the 50 random facts tag about me. Um, I get a lot of questions now uh, that I've been on YouTube a little bit longer for people to get to know me. So people are naturally curious and I understand that I have no problem giving a little bit more information about myself. Obviously I'm not giving anything that's way too personal. I'm not going to give, you know, uh, information that can come back to me like about where I live and stuff like that but um, I have no problem giving some interesting facts about myself to you guys because I think it's just natural to wonder about people when you watch them you know if they upload videos and you know you um, are subscribed to them so I totally understand so I believe I have 50 here and I'd like to just get started <laughs> my dog was just barking so I had to stop for a second all right, um, so I'm going to number them as I, I did have them numbered, and I did write them in my file of facts because to write 50 things down in my phone, I have an iPhone, and I hate typing on it, which should be a fact, <laughs> but I didn't put it as a fact. All right, so I'm going to start with number one. My name is actually not Jan. It's a nickname. My real name is Janice Lynn. It's J-A-N-E-C-E. -E. It's uh, the uh, origin is Jeunesse, which is J-E-U-N-E-S-S-E. -E -E. My father named me. He wanted a French name. He is French and Spanish. And my mother, uh, being a mom, Irish mom, in the late 60s, thought that was a little too, you know, off the wall I guess and she compromised with him and kind of made it sound a little bit more normal I guess and she, I guess they both agreed on Janice um, I personally don't like jeunesse Janice and my father actually pronounces it jeunesse I don't like any of them at all to tell you the truth I just wished I had been plain old Mary <laughs> but um, yeah that's my name so it's J-A-N-E-C-E -E, and when my father gives me a card it's got the little accent on the E because um I guess he feels he can. So uh, that's fact number one. Fact number two, I am a true Leo. Whenever you read a description of a Leo, the horoscope sign, um, everything. And I even have to agree with it myself from fiery disposition to um, loving the colors that are vibrant, um, very loyal. I'm extremely loyal, uh, very protective. And I've gotten into several arguments with families uh, over the years of just how protective I am of my children. And I always walk away being very unpopular, but they're my kids. So, you know, end of story there. And um, yeah, so that doesn't matter to me at all. But I am a true Leo inside and out. Number three, I love orange roses. It's my favorite color of uh, flower and my favorite flower. Uh, I also love white orchids, but I had to choose between the two and I picked the orange roses. I think they're just so, so beautiful. Number four, I hate the smell of fake um, or faux scented roses. I just don't like that scent at all. I love the smell of real roses, like the orange roses, but you give me a fake rose scented item and I'm not using it. Number five, I hate, hate the sound of chewing. It drives me up a wall or out of a room. And trust me, if you're chewing loud enough right here, you would prefer me out of the room because I'm just going to throw daggers at you with my eyes. I just don't like it. And I've been in restaurants where I've had to walk away to the restroom hoping that that person just stopped by the time I got back. Uh, I just find it very, very rude and it's just gross to me. Um, number six. I'm going to come off very bad on all these. I'm sorry, but these are real facts about me. I only use real cloth napkins for myself when I set the table at night. My family's okay with paper napkins. My daughter likes the cloth napkins when she sees me put one out for me. But quite honestly, um, paper napkins just irritate my lips. I don't know why. Uh, number seven, I am a real trained cosmetologist. I don't know if anyone really knows that. I went to two beauty schools in New York, Robert Fiance and Wilfred Beauty Academy, and I got my license, and I actually was out in the world as a licensed hairdresser because I went there for makeup. You needed a hair license in order to do makeup in New York City, and they taught me two weeks' worth of makeup out of a nine-month program, and I can cut hair and I could do makeup, but I was really bummed when we finally got to the makeup part and I realized it was the end of my program. But yes, so now I definitely went to cosmetology and beauty school. Number eight, I was married once before. Uh, I think you guys know that. Number nine, um, this relates to my first husband as well. We honeymooned in Nantucket Island. It's one of my favorite places in the world next to Paris. I know it like the back of my hand. I've been there so many times I lost count because we used to go back every year for our anniversary and we used to go back for the Daffodil Festival, which I hope they still do. But um, anyway, I love Nantucket. 
Number 10, I would love to go to Dubai and Morocco. Either one I would take in a heartbeat. Um, I would love to see either one of them. Number 11, I wanted to be an Olympic gymnast and Nadia Comaneci was my idol. Number 12, I got my lesson uh, license at 27. I waited uh, because, you know, being in the city, you don't need a car. And when I got pregnant at 27 with my first husband, um, I realized that I needed a car. So I got one at 27, my license. Number 13, I have no problem divulging this. It's not that big of a deal. I My religion is Protestant. I'm actually Methodist. And uh, my children are Catholic as well as both my husbands were Catholic, so that's kind of why the children are Catholic. I think that, um, I don't know, I think I was just being very honorable towards my husbands at the time. I kind of pushed the issue with my first husband about wanting my son to be Protestant, but um, he went to church regularly as a child, and I didn't go as much, and I kind of felt it was more honorable, I guess, uh, since he had more of a stronger feeling about it, so I went with that. And then when I divorced and remarried, my first son's Catholic, I certainly wasn't even going to think about changing religions for the, you know, the next two children. I, bad enough, I think, that they had different last names, so I didn't want different religions on top of it, so, um, but I am Methodist. Um, number 14. Uh, ethnicity. I get this question a lot. I'm told I'm very exotic looking, and I think that's really only because I got high cheekbones, but um, whatever. Maybe I'm just exotic looking. I don't know. I am Spanish and French from my father, and Irish and English and American Indian from my mother. Uh, number 15. I worked as a fashion intern for two designers, uh, and I you guys know that I worked in fashion, but I actually worked as an intern. It wasn't as glamorous as Blake Lively's job, but I actually did do it. Uh, and then went on to be a proper assistant to a buyer. Uh, number 16. I think that's 16. I enjoy being alone. I have absolutely no problem going into a cafe and having lunch by myself or um, going into a restaurant and having dinner by myself. It's just kind of what you do, uh, at least when I was working and uh, had to grab dinner before, um, you know, before I went back to work. So it's really not a big deal for me. So I enjoy myself. I... Um, I like me, so I, I like being alone. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but I have no problem being by myself at all, ever. Uh, number 17. I love the color black, but it's not my, it's my favorite color, but, um, technically it's not a color, so I was gonna say I love the color sage green as well, but I gravitate to the color black a lot, from my beauty room here and accents I put into, uh, pillows to couches to, um, just about everything, so I, I do love the color black. Number 18, I love good stationery, it just actually ran through my, uh, stationery, I ordered it from Crane, it was monogrammed, and I just love sending out a note on, stationery that bears my name. Number 19, I love men with gray hair. It's such a double standard that they can grow old and have gray hair and be distinguished and for us we, we just look old. But I've always been attracted to men, um, more mature men, older men with gray hair. So I, I do love gray hair on men. Um, number 20, both my great-grandfathers, I probably should have said this earlier, both my great-grandfathers were born in France and we have um, several French surnames on my side of the family, on my dad's side. Number 21, I have a belly ring. I love my belly ring. I got it after I divorced. I guess that's the thing you do, right? People get tattoos, I got a belly ring. And I love it, I think it's sexy. I'm not gonna show it, but um, it just I think it's just a really nice little element to me. I, I love it, so, but yeah. No other piercings except my ears. Number 22, I always wanted to go skydiving, but my husband asked me to refrain from doing so right now because we have little kids. I could totally understand where he's coming from, but it's something I do want to do one day. I do worry about what it does to my skin, but I, I definitely would do it if I was given the opportunity. Number 23, I, I wrote down I dislike phone convos. I, I enjoy talking on the phone. I just quite often am interrupted at home, especially with kids running around, a dog barking, the doorbell ringing. I feel like I can never have a, a good conversation on the phone. So I always keep a running text between me and my girlfriend um, or anyone, really. But uh, I do enjoy a conversation, just if I have the time where I'm by myself, you know, away from all the chaos. And quite often that doesn't happen. So a text is better for me than a phone conversation. Number 24, I love the sound of rain as I go to sleep. 
25. I hate to unload my dishwasher. I've been known to have a full set of dry dishes in the dishwasher and I'll reach into the cabinet to get a clean plate. I don't know why. It, I hate to unload it. So it's wrong of me, but that's what I do. Number 26, I take the twist tie things off of bread or that plastic weird shaped thing and I toss it immediately as soon as I get it because I don't have the patience to uh, sit there and twist the bread back together. I just don't. My, I'm losing my lighting. I'm sorry. I fixed my window a little bit more. There you go. Um, so yeah, I take the twisties and I just toss them because I just don't have the patience. I'm, I'm actually a very impatient person. Number 27, I never leave the house without checking the burners on my stove. I'm so afraid that gas will leak out. And it has happened on my stove before where the gas does leak out a little bit. And i just very OCD about it. I could be at the front door with my kids and I know that um, I checked it already. But I still have to run back up the stairs and check it one more time. Number 28, my favorite movie is Birdcage. I had to really think about this. I love that movie, and I said, is it really my favorite favorite? I think it is. Um, that and a couple others, but I had to pick one. So I picked my favorite movie, and that's Birdcage with Nathan Lane and um, Robin Williams. And if you've never watched it, it's totally hysterical. I laugh my butt off every time I watch it. Um, number 29, I love the Jewish religion. I am Protestant, like I said, but... I love it. I live in an area around the corner from a temple, and quite often you see the families walking to temple, and um, I explain to my children that, you know, they are Jewish and they have a temple. My kids learn that from school, but um, I've developed good relationships with one elderly couple, and the little man's always walking behind his wife. They don't walk together, but they're so sweet and so wonderful, and I've enjoyed all the stories about their grandchildren, and when my husband and I go to Paris and we go usually every year but this past April we didn't go but we always get the same hotel and we always ask for the same room because they know us now and across from our hotel is a residential building and there's one family and I promise I'm not spying on them but I guess maybe I kind of am but you can see them having their dinners and it's such a beautiful time honored traditions that they have set up with their children you see the older gentleman which I'm assuming is a grandfather and you see the father and the wife and the children and you can watch what they I watch what they do and I just sit there from my hotel window as my husband's like relaxing whatever and I have a glass of wine and I'm watching them and I'm mesmerized by it and I just absolutely think it's beautiful beautiful religion I love all cultures but that one I've I know a lot about and I have a lot of good Jewish friends okay this one I did I debated whether or not to put this in because I don't have real proof but my mother always told me this and I text my aunt because my mother's not here anymore to see what information she can give me. But my mother always told me that my great-grandmother was a dar, which is a daughter of the American Revolution, which you would have to Google to see what they were all about. But basically, they were a group of women who did a lot of good. They came from wealthy, moneyed families. And my aunt really doesn't know too much about it, but my mother seemed to know more about it, but I can't get any more information. And that kind of sucks, because there are so many things that I know my mother would know, because she was so close to my grandmother. Um, because she had children early and my grandmother and her were always together that she knew so much about the family history that I just I'm not privy to anymore because she's not here so that's kind of sad for me but um, yeah so apparently according to my mother my great-grandmother was a dar um, which you know I guess meant something at the time okay number 31 I go to the doctor for everything um, if I see something on me and after three days whether it's like if I have a bad headache that lasts for like a week, if I have a pain in my ear or I see something on my leg, I'm at the doctor within a week's time and I always panic if they give me an appointment for like a week and a half later because I'm thinking at that point, whatever it is, is going to get worse. So I'm one of those people. Um, I called a hypochondriac and told my girlfriend and people just look at me like, you're fine, relax. But I feel if I don't check something out, that'll be the time that something really happened to me. I'm hoping my lighting is not bad. I may have to turn on my light. Okay, number 32, I love good sheets. And I'll tell you why. Because when I was working and had a little baby and worked a very busy job, I really quite often only got away for one good vacation a year. Uh, I wish I had more time than that, but I was in a very demanding job and I could not get away more than that. So I made sure that one vacation was long enough for, really, for me to feel like I was on vacation and was at a really great, great place. And really great hotels have really great sheets and I have an affinity for great sheets. So I um, no longer work, but I still have that obsession. Number 33, I always need a new sponge 
at the sink. Uh, you know, I use those yellow ones with the green scrubby side and they fall apart kind of quickly and I get grossed out even looking at it, touching it, so I always have to have a new sponge at the sink. My husband knows that, so I'm, I'm always seeing a new sponge in there, which is really lovely. Okay, it's up to 50 minutes, huh? Okay, um, number 34. You can say I'm really OCD. I never leave the house without the beds made, but that's only because I'm up so early, I'm completely dressed. We have a routine in the house in the morning where my kids, you know, need to help me in order to get it to school on time. And as they're, you know, getting their book bags ready, putting lunches in, I'm going into every room and I'm making the beds. Um, and I just don't want to come back because lots of times I hit the ground running, I drop the kids off, and I don't want to come back at 11 o'clock in the morning and still have to make bed. So everything's done. I don't mind the coffee cup in the sink, but I don't like a bunch of dishes in my sink either. So I want to come back to a clean house. Um, number 35. This was more of a work thing. If something bad happened to me on the day that I wore a new outfit, I never wore that outfit again. Like if I got in trouble by a boss, which never really happened, but there were times that people were just kind of jealous and backstabbing a lot of my jobs, um, or would say something, or I may have gotten into a tiff with someone, or I may have um, lost something, anything that I deemed bad. If I was wearing a new outfit that day, I did not wear it again. And it could be a really expensive outfit and I would just put it in the back of my closet and try my best to forget about it because I figured it was a bad luck outfit. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, um, that was 35. Okay, number 36. I love all the soaps at TJ Maxx and Marshalls that say Portugal, France, Spain, Budapest, anything like that. It makes me feel like I've bought something from another country and another culture because I think that's my next one. Yeah, my next one is I love all cultures. That's number 37. I'm such a historian buff that I soak up things about other cultures. To me, I just, I'm, I guess maybe because I'm so mixed with my own ethnicities. Um, and I teach my children to respect that too, because you never know who your boss is going to be, who your wife's going to be, who your landlord's going to be. You never know. So it's best to respect everyone and understand that everyone's different, not you. And you got to look outside of the box. I think personally, me speaking, I teach my kids that pretty early on with different types of people. So that was number 37 and 36. But number 36 was about the soaps. I would just always never bought dial soap in the supermarket. I would go to TJ Maxx and spend $4.99 on a small bar of soap and treasure it because it was from France <laughs> or Spain or something like that. All right, uh, number 37 was I love all cultures. Number 38, I would change all the furniture in my house right now. It's completely not my style anymore. My style used to be very warm and cozy and rubies colored uh, couches and pillows and uh, well, reds, I mean, uh, dark greens and silks and brocades. And um, my living room is very uh, Mediterranean looking. And I think it's still beautiful and it's very warm and it's very homey. But now I'm really just completely the opposite. And I love sleek and modern. And I walk into Ikea, which is my favorite furniture store, and I could just browse all the rooms and see how beautifully decorated they are. They just do such great setups. And I could just sit there and say, I would love that bookcase with that white canvas chair and that wooden basket and it's so simple and so clean looking as opposed to I think a lot of the fussiness I have out there that's why this room had to be very very clean and white and black because that's what I gravitate to now number uh, 39 my favorite gift anyone could ever give me well more my family not friends uh, would be cash or a gift card I mean I, I kind of like to pick out my own gifts from my own family and I pretty much do with my husband and my kids, I let them, uh, like they got me my Alex and Ani bracelets for my birthday. And I told them what I wanted, but they went in and they picked out whatever they wanted. But I pretty much led them in the direction of what I wanted. Number 40, I was a camp counselor as a teenager for quite a few years. Number 41, I'm a stickler for manners. A stickler, I mean to me, it's like I tell my kids when they go to school. When you get your report card, I don't even want to have to look at the conduct. I better see A's. You could be dumb in a subject, not dumb, but you can be bad in a subject, you could need help in whatever area, but I never want to have to worry about your manners or your conduct. I'm just, it just goes without saying in my book. And that extends to people and restaurants and just people who are rude. There's a lot of good New Yorkers, but there's a lot of rude New Yorkers, and I don't like it. There's just no reason to be rude. I talk to everyone, and I'm always nice to everyone. Um, I, number 42, if there's any still subscribers left after this, number 42, I like to have a good command of the vocabulary. I enjoy words. I don't like, like there's an expression cray cray. 
I, someone actually said that in one of my videos, you're cray cray or something like that. And I loathe that word. I loathe slang language. I don't like it at all. And I really like to have a good command of my English vocabulary. Number 43, quality over quantity anytime goes without saying. I'll use the same bag for 25 years as long as it's a great investment piece and I'm going to use it and I'll use it till it falls apart on me. Um, number 44, this is interesting. I wear my, a lot of my husband's clothes, his oversized t-shirts to bed. When I was pregnant, I wore his underwear. I swear to God I did because I had big bellies and um, I just put on his underwear and they fit me. <laughs> kill me for that one but it's true so but I, I wore his socks many times his dress socks when with my skinny black jeans and yeah so I actually wear a lot of my husband's clothes now if you wore mine we'd have a problem but okay that's number 44 number 45 I love autumn it's my favorite time of year Number 46, I cook a lot. I come alive in the autumn and winter. I love to roast. I love to bake. I'm not the best baker. I'm a better cook. Um, in the summertime, I like to grill and hang out in the backyard, read a magazine, you know, hang out with the kids. I don't want to be anywhere near a stove. But in the winter, in the autumn, I'm just all about being at home and having everyone wake up to the smell of something delicious. That, I think to me that's just a great memory to have for a kid. Number um, 47, I am the only girl of three brothers, which leads me to number 48. I'm completely daddy's girl, and I'm proud of it. And my daughter once heard me recently say, okay, daddy, and she looked at me. She's like, you just called Grandpa Joe daddy. I was like, I know. It's just a hard habit to break. What can, you, what can I say? That's number 48, and like I said, I'm the only girl of three brothers. Um, number 49, I can't watch anything on the news or read any story. And quite often I don't have enough information about major stories where they involve children and them being hurt, God forbid, anything like that. I cannot, I'm totally, I, I just can't. It gives me nightmares and I, it really does give me, I've had nightmares about something I heard about on the news and then went to bed and I, I just tied it into my own life, my children, and I just, I can't read any story about children. And number 50, I hope this is number 50. I kept what I think is the most interesting one for last. I hope this is not too long. It takes me forever to upload this. But I knew Andy Warhol. Uh, Andy Warhol and I, um, he didn't work in this building. I worked in this building. I think he was visiting someone. You don't, I didn't really ever ask. It was not in my business. But I used to see him. It was a building on East 33rd. And um, it... He had the factory, which had, I know, several locations. He might have had an office there, but someone said, no, he really didn't, because everyone knew Andy Warhol was in the building. Um, but we shared the same birthday, which we discussed once. He was born August 6th as well. And he was just a very interesting man, and I spoke to him very, very little, but we did uh, bump into each other. And, you know, he didn't speak much, and he really observed, and he was really very reclusive but I can actually say that I knew Andy Warhol and I thought he was a very lovely man albeit very very quiet slightly quirky and strange but I did know Andy Warhol so that is my 50 random facts tag about me I hope you found this interesting I hope I still have subscribers by the time this is over uh, you know random facts tags about me are personal preferences my thoughts and views um, but yeah, so I do hope that you found this interesting nonetheless. So that's it, guys. I will see you guys very, very soon. Sorry about the lighting. It got very, very dark. And everyone have a great, great day. Bye, guys.